Section 5.1 to 5.3 Asset Classes, Investment Strategies and Considerations, 5.1 Passive versus Active Investing, Passive and Active Investment Approaches represent two different strategies for managing investment portfolios. Here's an explanation of each approach, Passive Investment Approach, Passive Investment, also known as Passive Management or Index Investing, aims to replicate the performance of a specific market index or benchmark. Passive investors believe in the efficient market hypothesis, which suggests that it is difficult to consistently outperform the market over the long term. Key features of the passive investment approach include index-based investing. Passive investors typically invest in index funds or exchange-traded funds, ETFs, that aim to mirror the performance of a specific index, such as the SP500 or a bond index. By holding a diversified portfolio that closely tracks the index, passive investors seek to capture the overall market return, low portfolio turnover. Passive portfolios have relatively low turnover because they aim to replicate the composition and weighting of the underlying index. This results in lower transaction costs and potentially lower taxable events, lower management fees. Passive investments generally have lower management fees compared to actively managed funds. This is because passive strategies do not require the same level of research and analysis as active strategies. The primary advantage of passive investing is its simplicity and cost effectiveness. It offers broad market exposure, diversification, and the potential to match the market's returns. However, passive investors accept that they will not outperform the market and may experience losses during market downturns. Active investment approach, Active investment involves actively managing a portfolio with the goal of outperforming a benchmark or the broader market. Active investors believe that they can identify mispriced securities and exploit market inefficiencies to generate excess returns. Key features of the active investment approach include research-driven decision-making. Active investors conduct in-depth research and analysis to select individual securities or make tactical asset allocation decisions. They may use various quantitative and qualitative techniques to identify undervalued or high potential investments. Portfolio customization. Active managers have the flexibility to deviate from the benchmark and make concentrated bets on specific securities, sectors, or regions based on their market views and investment strategies. Higher portfolio turnover. Active management often involves more frequent buying and selling of securities to capitalize on perceived market opportunities. This can result in higher transaction costs and potentially higher tax implications, potentially higher management fees. Active investment strategies tend to have higher management fees compared to passive strategies. The fees reflect the costs associated with research, analysis, and active trading. The primary advantage of active investing is the potential to achieve superior returns through skillful security selection, market timing, and active management decisions. Active managers aim to outperform the market by exploiting market inefficiencies and making well-informed investment decisions. However, not all active managers consistently outperform their benchmarks, and the higher fees and increased complexity can be a disadvantage. It's important to note that passive and active approaches are not mutually exclusive. Investors can combine both strategies within their portfolio, allocating a portion of their investments to passive index funds for broad market exposure while also selectively investing in actively managed funds or individual securities. The decision between passive and active approaches depends on an individual's investment goals, risk tolerance, time commitment, and belief in market efficiency. Index funds and exchange-traded funds, ETFs, are popular investment vehicles used in passive portfolio management. Here's an overview of index funds, ETFs, and how they are utilized in passive investing, index funds. Index funds are mutual funds or collective investment schemes that aim to replicate the performance of a specific market index, such as the SP500 or the FTSE 100. The fund manager constructs the portfolio to mirror the composition and weighting of the index it tracks. The key features of index funds include Diversification Index funds provide broad market exposure by investing in a diversified portfolio of securities that match the index they track. This diversification helps reduce specific risks associated with individual stocks or sectors. Low costs. Index funds typically have lower expense ratios compared to actively managed funds because they follow a passive investment strategy. Since index funds aim to replicate the index performance rather than actively select securities, they do not require extensive research and analysis. 
transparency, the holdings of index funds are publicly disclosed, allowing investors to know which securities they own and in what proportions. This transparency helps investors understand the composition of their portfolio. Long-term investment, index funds are designed for long-term investment, as their objective is to capture the overall market return over time. Investors in index funds generally aim to hold their positions for the long haul, rather than engaging in frequent trading, exchange-traded funds, ETFs, ETFs are investment funds that are traded on stock exchanges, similar to individual stocks. ETFs can track various types of indexes, including broad market indexes, sector indexes, international indexes, and fixed income indexes. Key features of ETFs include, intraday trading, ETFs can be bought or sold throughout the trading day, unlike traditional mutual funds that are priced at the end of the trading day. This provides investors with flexibility in executing trades and allows them to take advantage of intraday market movements, liquidity. ETFs are generally highly liquid, meaning they can be easily bought or sold without significant price impact. The liquidity of ETFs depends on the trading volume and the liquidity of the underlying securities, lower costs. Like index funds, ETFs tend to have lower expense ratios compared to actively managed funds. They are structured to passively replicate the performance of an index, reducing the costs associated with active management, diversification, ETFs offer investors the opportunity to gain diversified exposure to a particular market segment or index. By investing in an ETF, investors can access a basket of securities that represents the underlying index. Passive portfolio management utilizing index funds and ETFs involves constructing a portfolio that closely mimics the composition and weighting of a specific index. The objective is to capture the overall market returns and achieve broad diversification. Investors who prefer a hands-off approach and believe in the efficiency of markets often opt for passive management using index funds or ETFs. These vehicles offer simplicity, lower costs, transparency, and a long-term investment focus. However, it's important to consider factors such as asset allocation, risk tolerance, and investment goals when constructing a passive portfolio using index funds or ETFs. Active stock selection and market timing are two strategies used in active portfolio management. Here's an overview of these strategies and some important considerations regarding their performance. Active stock selection. Active stock selection involves researching and analyzing individual stocks to identify those that are expected to outperform the broader market or their respective sectors. Active stock pickers aim to select securities that they believe are undervalued or have superior growth prospects compared to their peers. Key considerations for active stock selection include fundamental analysis. Active stock selection often involves in-depth fundamental analysis, including evaluating a company's financial statements. Industry trends, competitive position, management quality, and growth potential. Analysts may use various valuation models and techniques to assess the intrinsic value of a stock, research and expertise. Active stock pickers typically rely on their research capabilities, industry knowledge, and experience to identify investment opportunities that they believe are mispriced or undervalued. They may conduct company visits, interviews, and gather information from various sources to make informed investment decisions. Concentrated portfolios Active managers may construct concentrated portfolios with a select number of high conviction stock picks. By focusing on a smaller number of stocks, they aim to generate significant returns if their chosen investments perform well, higher turnover. Active stock selection often leads to higher portfolio turnover, as managers actively buy and sell stocks based on their assessment of market conditions and individual securities. This can result in increased transaction costs and potential tax implications. Market timing. Market timing refers to the strategy of attempting to predict the future direction of financial markets, including stock markets, and making investment decisions based on those predictions. Market timers aim to enter the market when they believe it is poised for an upswing and exit or reduce exposure when they expect a downturn. Key considerations for market timing include, market analysis. Market timers analyze various factors, such as economic indicators, market trends, technical analysis, and investor sentiment, to predict market movements. They may use quantitative models or rely on their intuition and experience to make timing decisions, accuracy, and consistency. 
market timing requires accurate predictions of market movements, which is challenging even for seasoned professionals. Consistently timing the market correctly over the long term is difficult, and mistimed decisions can lead to underperformance and missed opportunities. Emotional bias, market timing decisions can be influenced by emotions and short-term market fluctuations. Emotional biases, such as fear and greed, can lead to suboptimal investment decisions and potentially result in poor performance. Performance considerations, the performance of active stock selection and market timing strategies can vary, and it is important to consider several factors. Track record. Assess the historical performance of active managers or market timers to evaluate their ability to consistently outperform the market or generate accurate market timing calls. However, Past performance is not a guarantee of future success, costs, and fees. Active management strategies tend to have higher fees compared to passive strategies. Consider whether the potential outperformance justifies the additional costs associated with active management. Risk management. Active strategies may carry higher risks due to concentrated portfolios, higher turnover, and potential mistakes in stock selection or market timing. Evaluate the risk management practices and processes implemented by the active manager or market timer, time and effort. Active strategies require ongoing research, monitoring, and decision-making. Consider whether you have the time, expertise, and interest to actively manage your investments or if you prefer a more passive approach. It's important to note that active stock selection and market timing strategies can be challenging to execute consistently and successfully. Many studies suggest that a significant number of active managers underperform their benchmarks over the long term. Investors should carefully assess their investment goals, risk tolerance, and preferences before deciding whether to pursue active strategies or opt for a more passive approach. 5.2 Factors Influencing Asset Class Performance, Economic Indicators, Market Cycles, and Geopolitical Factors are Key Factors That Can Influence Financial Markets and Investment Decisions. Here's an overview of each, economic indicators, economic indicators are statistical data points that provide insights into the overall health and performance of an economy. They help investors gauge the current and future economic conditions, which can impact investment decisions. Some commonly monitored economic indicators include Gross Domestic Product, GDP GDP measures the total value of goods and services produced within a country's borders. It provides a broad indicator of economic growth or contraction, employment data, metrics such as the unemployment rate, non-farm payrolls, and job creation numbers provide information about the strength of the labor market and consumer spending power. Inflation indicators, measures such as the Consumer Price Index, CPI, and Producer Price Index, PPI, track changes in prices of goods and services, providing insights into inflationary pressures, interest rates, central banks' decisions on. Interest rates can have a significant impact on borrowing costs, investment decisions, and the performance of financial markets. Monitoring economic indicators helps investors assess the overall economic environment, make informed decisions about asset allocation, and adjust investment strategies based on economic trends. Market cycles. Market cycles refer to the recurring patterns and phases that financial markets go through over time. These cycles typically include periods of expansion, peak, contraction, and trough. Understanding market cycles is important for investors as different asset classes and investment strategies perform differently in each phase. Common market cycles include, bull market, a period of sustained upward price movement in financial markets. Characterized by investor optimism, rising prices, and increasing economic activity, bear market, a period of sustained downward price movement in financial markets, characterized by investor pessimism, falling prices, and economic slowdown, market corrections, short-term declines or pullbacks in the market, typically ranging from 10% to 20%, which can occur within both bull and bear markets, recovery, the phase following a bear market or recession, characterized by improving economic conditions and a gradual return to growth, investors who are aware of market cycles can adjust their investment strategies accordingly, such as adopting a more defensive approach during bear markets and seeking opportunities during market corrections or the early stages of a recovery. Geopolitical factors. Geopolitical factors encompass political events, policies, and tensions on a global scale that can impact financial markets and investment decisions. These factors can include government policies, 
changes in government policies, such as fiscal policies, monetary policies, or regulatory changes, can have significant effects on specific industries, sectors, or the overall market. Trade relations, disputes or changes in trade agreements between countries can affect global supply chains, trade volumes, and market sentiment. Geopolitical events. Events like political elections, geopolitical conflicts, natural disasters, or global pandemics can introduce uncertainty and volatility into financial markets. Geopolitical factors can create risks and opportunities for investors. It's important to stay informed about current events, assess their potential impact on markets and specific investments, and consider diversification and risk management strategies to mitigate geopolitical risks, understanding and monitoring economic indicators, market cycles, and geopolitical factors can provide investors with valuable insights for making informed investment decisions. However, it's important to note that these factors are complex, and their impact on financial markets can be unpredictable. It is advisable to consult with financial professionals and conduct thorough research before making investment decisions. Interest rates, inflation, and monetary policy are closely interconnected factors that play a significant role in shaping the economic landscape and influencing financial markets. Here's an overview of each, interest rates. Interest rates represent the cost of borrowing or the return on lending capital. Central banks, such as the Federal Reserve in the United States, set interest rates as part of their monetary policy to influence economic conditions. Key points to understand about interest rates include, policy rates, Central banks set policy rates, such as the federal funds rate in the U.S., which serve as a benchmark for other interest rates in the economy. Changes in policy rates can have a ripple effect on borrowing costs for consumers. Businesses and investors impact on borrowing and investing. Lower interest rates generally encourage borrowing and investment by reducing the cost of capital. This can stimulate economic activity, including consumer spending, business expansion, and investment in financial markets. Conversely, higher interest rates can discourage borrowing and investment, bond yields, interest rates affect the yields on fixed income securities, such as bonds. When interest rates rise, bond prices tend to fall, and vice versa. This relationship is important for fixed income investors as it affects the value of their holdings, Inflation. Inflation refers to the sustained increase in the general level of prices for goods and services in an economy over time. It erodes the purchasing power of money. Understanding inflation is crucial for investors and policymakers. Key points to understand about inflation include consumer price index, CPI. The CPI measures changes in the average prices of a basket of goods and services consumed by households. It is commonly used as a gauge of inflation impact on investments, inflation can erode the real value of investment returns. For example, if inflation is 3% and an investment earns a 2% return, the investor's purchasing power has effectively decreased, inflation hedging, certain investments, such as inflation-protected bonds, tips, or commodities like gold, are considered inflation hedges as their value may rise with inflation. Helping investors preserve purchasing power, monetary policy, Monetary policy refers to the actions taken by central banks to manage the money supply and influence interest rates to achieve specific economic objectives. Central banks use monetary policy tools to control inflation, promote economic growth, and maintain financial stability. Key points to understand about monetary policy include, expansionary monetary policy, central banks may pursue expansionary monetary policy during periods of economic weakness or recession. This typically involves lowering interest rates, increasing the money supply, and implementing measures to stimulate borrowing and spending. Contractionary monetary policy. Central banks may adopt a contractionary monetary policy to combat inflation or control excessive economic growth. This often involves raising interest rates, reducing the money supply, and implementing measures to restrict borrowing and spending. Forward guidance. Central banks communicate their future monetary policy intentions through forward guidance, which can influence market expectations and investor behavior, interest rates, inflation, and monetary policy are interconnected because central banks often use interest rate adjustments as a tool to manage inflation and support economic objectives. Investors closely monitor changes in interest rates and inflation trends to make informed investment decisions across various asset classes, 
it's important to note that the relationship between interest rates, inflation, and monetary policy can be complex and can vary across different economies and time periods. Therefore, staying informed about economic indicators, central bank announcements, and understanding their potential impact on investments is crucial for investors. Consulting with financial professionals can provide additional insights and guidance tailored to individual investment needs and objectives. Behavioral finance is a field of study that combines principles from psychology and economics to understand how human behavior and emotions influence financial decisions and market outcomes. Investor sentiment is a key concept within behavioral finance that refers to the overall attitude, emotions, and beliefs of investors towards the financial markets. Here's an overview of behavioral finance and investor sentiment. Behavioral finance, traditional finance theory assumes that investors are rational, always act in their best interest, and make decisions based on all available information. However, behavioral finance recognizes that investors are subject to cognitive biases, emotions, and heuristics that can lead to irrational decision making. Some key principles of behavioral finance include cognitive biases. Investors may exhibit biases such as overconfidence, confirmation bias, seeking information that confirms existing beliefs, loss aversion, preferring to avoid losses over acquiring gains, and anchoring, relying too heavily on initial information, dot, hurting behavior. Investors tend to follow the actions and decisions of others, often resulting in herd behavior. This can lead to market bubbles or crashes as investors collectively make similar decisions without independently analyzing the underlying fundamentals. Emotional influences, emotions, such as fear and greed, can drive investor behavior and impact investment decisions. For example, fear can lead to selling during market downturns, while greed can drive excessive risk taking during market upswings. Investor sentiment. Investor sentiment refers to the overall psychological state, attitudes, and beliefs of investors towards the financial markets. It reflects the collective optimism or pessimism of market participants and can influence market trends and outcomes. Key aspects of investor sentiment include market optimism slash pessimism. Investor sentiment can swing between optimism and pessimism, which can impact market trends. During periods of high optimism, Investors may become more bullish and drive prices higher, while periods of pessimism can lead to selling pressure and market declines. Sentiment indicators Various sentiment indicators are used to gauge investor sentiment, such as surveys, market sentiment indices, put call ratios, and social media sentiment analysis. These indicators attempt to quantify investor sentiment and provide insights into potential market movements. Contrarian investing. Some investors use contrarian strategies, which involve taking positions opposite to prevailing investor sentiment. They may buy when sentiment is excessively negative and sell when sentiment is excessively positive, aiming to capitalize on market overreactions. Understanding behavioral finance and investor sentiment is crucial for investors because it highlights the importance of managing emotions, avoiding common biases, and making rational investment decisions. It also underscores the potential for market inefficiencies that can be exploited by contrarian or value-based investment approaches. By recognizing the impact of investor sentiment, investors can make more informed decisions and develop strategies that align with their long-term investment goals. It's important to note that behavioral finance is a complementary framework to traditional finance theory and does not dismiss the importance of rational decision-making and fundamental analysis. Combining insights from both traditional and behavioral finance can provide a more comprehensive understanding of market dynamics and help investors navigate the complexities of financial markets. 5.3 Assessing investment opportunities, fundamental analysis and technical analysis are two primary methods used by investors to analyze and make investment decisions in financial markets. Here's an overview of each approach. Fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis involves evaluating the intrinsic value of an asset by analyzing its underlying factors, such as financial statements, economic conditions, industry trends, and company-specific factors. Key aspects of fundamental analysis include financial statements. Fundamental analysts examine financial statements, including income statements, balance sheets, and cash flow statements, to assess a company's financial health, profitability, and growth potential. Economic analysis. Fundamental analysis considers macroeconomic factors, such as GDP growth, interest rates, 
inflation, and government policies to understand the broader economic environment and its impact on investments. Industry and competitive analysis, analysts assess the industry dynamics, competitive landscape, market trends, and company-specific factors to evaluate a company's competitive position and growth prospects, valuation, fundamental analysts estimate the intrinsic value of an asset by considering factors like earnings, cash flows, dividends, and other relevant financial metrics. They compare the estimated value to the market price to determine if the asset is undervalued or overvalued. Fundamental analysis is commonly used for long-term investment decisions, particularly in stocks and other assets where underlying value and financial performance are critical. It aims to identify assets that are potentially mispriced relative to their intrinsic value. Technical analysis. Technical analysis involves analyzing historical price and volume data, as well as patterns and indicators, to forecast future price movements and make investment decisions. Key aspects of technical analysis include price charts and patterns. Technical analysts study price charts and patterns, such as support and resistance levels, trend lines, and chart formations, to identify potential price trends and reversals. Technical indicators. Analysts use various technical indicators, such as moving averages, oscillators, and volume indicators, to gain insights into the strength and momentum of price movements, market psychology. Technical analysis considers market psychology and investor sentiment as reflected in price patterns and trading volumes. It assumes that historical price patterns tend to repeat due to consistent human behavior. Technical analysis is often used for short-term trading and timing decisions. It focuses on identifying patterns and trends in price data to generate buy and sell signals, irrespective of the underlying fundamental factors of the asset. It's important to note that fundamental analysis and technical analysis are not mutually exclusive, and many investors use a combination of both approaches in their decision-making process. Some investors may start with fundamental analysis to identify attractive investment opportunities based on the underlying value of the asset and then use technical analysis to determine entry and exit points for trades. Both approaches have their strengths and limitations. And their effectiveness can vary depending on the asset class market conditions, and individual investor preferences. It's essential for investors to understand the principles and tools of both fundamental and technical analysis and choose an approach that aligns with their investment objectives and time horizon. Quantitative and qualitative research are two distinct approaches to gathering and analyzing data in various fields, including finance and investment. Here's an overview of each approach. Quantitative research, Quantitative research involves the collection and analysis of numerical data to uncover patterns, relationships, and statistical insights. It relies on objective measurements and statistical analysis to draw conclusions. Key aspects of quantitative research include data collection. Quantitative research uses structured methods to collect data, such as surveys, questionnaires, experiments, or analyzing pre existing datasets. The data collected is often numerical in nature. Statistical analysis. Quantitative researchers employ statistical techniques to analyze the data, including descriptive statistics, correlation analysis, regression analysis, hypothesis testing, and more. These methods aim to identify relationships, test hypotheses, and make predictions or generalizations. Objectivity and replicability. Quantitative research strives for objectivity, aiming to eliminate personal bias and ensure replicability of the study. It relies on clear research designs, standard procedures, and statistical rigor. Quantitative research is commonly used in finance to analyze market data, financial statements, economic indicators, and other numerical variables. It provides a structured and statistical approach to understanding patterns, trends, and relationships in financial markets and investments. Qualitative research, Qualitative research focuses on understanding subjective experiences, perspectives, and meanings through non-numerical data. It emphasizes capturing the richness, depth, and context of human behavior and perceptions. Key aspects of qualitative research include data collection. Qualitative research employs methods such as interviews, observations, focus groups, case studies, and textual analysis to gather non-numerical data, such as narratives, opinions, and interpretations. Interpretative analysis. Qualitative researchers analyze the collected data using interpretative techniques, 
including thematic analysis, content analysis, grounded theory, and discourse analysis. They look for patterns, themes, and underlying meanings in the data, subjectivity in contextual understanding, qualitative research acknowledges the subjectivity and contextuality of human experiences and seeks to explore the social, cultural, and psychological factors influencing behavior and decision-making. Qualitative research is often used in finance to gain insights into investor behavior. Market sentiment, decision-making processes, and other subjective aspects that quantitative methods may not capture fully. It provides a deeper understanding of the human element in financial decision-making and can complement quantitative analysis. It's important to note that quantitative and qualitative research approaches are not mutually exclusive, and they can be combined in a mixed methods approach. Researchers often integrate both approaches to gain a more comprehensive understanding of complex phenomena. In finance and investment, combining quantitative data analysis with qualitative insights can provide a well-rounded perspective and inform more informed decision-making. The choice between quantitative and qualitative research depends on the research objectives, the nature of the research question, the available resources, and the specific context of the study. Both approaches have their strengths and limitations, and selecting the appropriate approach depends on the research goals and the type of data needed to answer the research questions effectively. Due diligence is a comprehensive and systematic process of research and analysis conducted by investors or financial professionals to assess the potential risks and rewards associated with an investment opportunity. It involves gathering relevant information, evaluating the key factors, and making informed decisions based on the findings. Here's an overview of the due diligence process and its role in investment decision-making, define investment objectives and criteria. The first step in the due diligence process is to clearly define the investment objectives, risk tolerance, and criteria that align with the investor's goals. This helps in narrowing down the universe of potential investment opportunities and setting specific evaluation parameters. Conduct preliminary research. In this stage, investors gather preliminary information about the investment opportunity. This may involve reviewing public information, industry reports, financial statements, and other available data to understand the investment's background. Market dynamics and competitive landscape evaluate financial and operational factors. Investors assess the financial health and operational performance of the investment opportunity. This includes reviewing financial statements, analyzing revenue and expense trends, assessing profitability, examining cash flow patterns, and evaluating key operational metrics. The goal is to gain insights into the investment's financial viability, sustainability, and growth potential, assess industry and market analysis, investors conduct an analysis of the industry in which the investment operates. This involves evaluating industry trends, market size, competitive forces, regulatory environment, and other relevant factors. The purpose is to assess the investment's position within the industry and its potential for success in the market, evaluate management team and governance, investors assess the capabilities and experience of the management team and their track record in running similar businesses. They analyze the corporate governance structure, board composition, and any potential conflicts of interest. This step helps determine the quality of the management team and their ability to execute the investment strategy, conduct risk analysis, investors identify and assess the potential risks associated with the investment. This includes analyzing financial risks, market risks, regulatory risks, operational risks, and other relevant factors that may impact the investment's performance. The goal is to understand the risk profile and determine if the potential rewards justify the risks involved perform legal and compliance review, investors conduct a review of legal and compliance aspects related to the investment. This may include examining contracts, agreements, intellectual property rights, licenses, and any legal or regulatory obligations. It helps ensure that the investment opportunity complies with applicable laws and regulations, make investment decision, based on the findings from the due diligence process, investors make an informed investment decision. This decision may involve proceeding with the investment, negotiating terms, conducting further analysis, or deciding not to pursue the opportunity, ongoing monitoring and review. Once the investment is made, investors continue to monitor its performance, evaluate risks, and review the investment thesis periodically. 
Ongoing due diligence helps identify any changes in circumstances or factors that may affect the investment's performance and allows for appropriate adjustments to the investment strategy if necessary. The due diligence process is crucial in mitigating investment risks, identifying opportunities, and making informed investment decisions. It provides a systematic framework for assessing investments, evaluating potential rewards and risks, and aligning investment choices with the investor's objectives and criteria. Effective due diligence helps investors make more informed decisions and increases the likelihood of successful outcomes.